Before we start solving the Schrodinger equation for specific problems and we get uh, the wave function for specific physical model systems, let's talk a little bit about what the wave function means and how we can think about what the wave function is. So let's say we, have, we can just graph here some general wave function, which is psi of x versus position x. And let's say that that wave function is just some function here. So that's our psi of x there. Now, as we said, that's our wave function. And a property of waves is that if we know the intens the intensity, or sorry, if we know the amplitude of a wave, so the amplitude is just how large that wave is, how how big its value is in space. So if we know the amplitude of a wave, then we can we have a way for going about what the intensity of that wave is. So the intensity of a wave is going to be just the amplitude of that wave squared. So we have to square the amplitude in order to get the intensity. Now, normally we would just square the function because this wave function here is just some function of x. But we have the special caveat that the wave function is complex. That is, it's not necessarily real. It can include a part which is imaginary. So. Let's just remind ourselves of some of the properties of complex valued functions. If we have some f of x which is going to be complex, then that is going to be the sum of a part which is real plus i, the square, which is the square root of 1, times some imaginary part. So some part which is real, some part which is imaginary, the sum of those together is going to be complex. So if we take what we call the complex conjugate of this, which we'll denote by this star, so moving forward whenever you see this star that means we're taking the complex conjugate of a function. That's just going to be the real part again and then we switch the sign on the imaginary part. So it equals negative of the imaginary part. So since psi can be complex in general, in order to get the intensity of it we don't need to square it we need to be careful and take the complex conjugate times itself. So we'll do what we call psi star psi. So psi star of x times psi of x, that is, or that is also called the absolute magnitude of psi squared. So the absolute magnitude being this, if you uh, have the sum of the square of the real and the imaginary part, is the absolute magnitude. That's what this psi star psi times psi gives us. Okay, so let's pretend we have some psi star psi here, which I'll denote in purple here. And that has some value which varies over space. So we need to have some type of interpretation for what this intensity means. So the German physicist Max Born proposed an interpretation which we call the Born interpretation of what the value of the wave function means. So if we take this function here and then we look at its value for some small distance, let's say this change in x here is dx, then this value inside of here, let me do that in yellow, this area inside here the value of psi star x times psi x times dx, that is going to equal the probability that the particle is located between x and dx. So the probability that the particle is located somewhere between the value x 
and x plus dx. So when we originally said that quantum mechanics is probabilistic, that you don't get exact trajectories out of it, this is what we mean. This interpretation of the wave function tells us that we don't know exactly where the particle is, but the wave function, or the, square, the absolute square magnitude of the wave function, tells us the probability of where the, where the particle is likely to be located in space. So in regions where psi star psi is large, the particle is more likely to be there than regions where psi star psi is low. And then we can also see from this a condition which we're going to use very extensively later on uh, called the normalization condition. So we know that the probability that the particle has to be somewhere is 1. 1 is certainty. 0 is there is no chance. 1 is there is there can only be that outcome. So if we look at the total density going for, from minus infinity to plus infinity, the entire range of x, if we look at the value of psi star x, psi x, over the entire range of where x can possibly be, we know that has to be 1 because we know x has to be somewhere. And this gives us a condition for that. And this uh, you'll hear talked about a lot is called normalization. So this will be called the normalization condition. Whenever the wave function obeys uh, this condition here, it is said to be normalized.